It does take us to our talk of the tape. What a seasonably saggy September might hold for your money. Let's ask Liz Young, SoFi's head of investment strategy, here live with us at Post Nine. Welcome. It's good to see you. Um, good to be here. So ahead it's not of like August. Saggy. August's been rocky. <laughs> uh, it has been horrible. Uh -huh. But what does it mean as we as we close this month and the next couple of days, then we move on? Well, I mean, we talked about this ahead of the show, really low volume. This is pretty normal for this time of year, kind of boring. The one thing that low volume does present the opportunity for, though, is that if there's a surprise or a bad data point or some sort of shock, it's that things move much more quickly in either direction, particularly on the downside. And there is a lot of data coming in this week. We've got some GDP data. We've got PCE. Mm -hmm. We've got jobs coming. So there's still a lot going on, despite the fact that we're closing out summer, getting into what usually is a pretty trepidatious period for the market in September and October. It is, but as Bespoke points out today, when you have a year like you've had up until September, mm -hmm. not so much. I mean, it's sort of overhyped how bad the fall can be. They say it's not typically a weak month when the S&P is already up double-digit percentage points year-to-date through the end of August. So maybe if things fall in the right way and you hit on one thing, and that's the data, mm -hmm. right? The data's got to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Yields have to cooperate. The data's got to be good, but not too good on the economy, right? Earnings estimates can't get revised lower. I'm going down this checklist I made for, for what has to happen for September not to, to be bad, for it to go right. And then you, you need tech to perform, don't you? You do, but I think what's happened since July, I mean, July was such a strong month. Coming into August, I think most people expected that there would be some give back. Even the bulls, even the tech bulls expected that there would be some give back. So a lot of this decline that we've seen since the end of July has been pretty orderly. That's not a bad thing. I think it's healthy for the market. I don't know that there's going to be a lot of earnings revisions or, or things that go on in that camp looking out through the end of the year into 2024 this week. I would well, expect earnings yeah. revisions to come in September, maybe. Maybe if they're going to come at that, all. No, that's what I'm thinking in September. For September to go right, I mean, you, you yeah. can't have earnings revisions lower. Right. You can't have yields continue to go up. That's right. You can't have inflation data coming on the wrong side of what the, the, the narrative has been. And maybe some would say you can't have good economic data because that is now bad. Good is bad again or not. I think I think good is bad from the Fed's perspective, but now we've all just sort of accepted the idea, and, and Jerome Powell reiterated this in Jackson Hole last week, accepted the idea that rates were going to be higher for longer, that they are not done fighting this. I think the PCE data is going to be really important because he reiterated that as well. We talk about CPI all the time. We're going to get PCE data. He's acknowledged that it's been good for a couple months, but a couple months does not a victory make, and they're still going to continue on this path. Still a 65% chance of a hike in November. So we might see another pause through September. Then you've got a built-in pause in October. In November, if they hike again, personally, I don't think they need to, but if they hike again, that could be a part where you get to the, the market gets to the point where it says, now we really cannot sustain these valuations anymore. And one or two of those lines has to move to get back into jive with what it's supposed to do from a relationship standpoint.